Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Crown Zenith, make sure you check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using that code OmniPoke. For today's video, we are going to be looking at a handful of regional results, because I'm a little bit behind on them, as well as some of the most recent late night results, just to really start closing this chapter on the Crown Zenith format. Um, because there is still a couple tournaments to go uh, in this meta game, so I still thought it was worth looking at. So we had Vancouver and Natal regionals going on, on over the same weekend. I haven't yet gone over these, but it was Lugia domination. So we're not going to have a look at all of these deck lists, but we are going to look at a handful of them, including the winner, which was William Azevedo. Very accomplished, very strong player um, with a very straightforward Lugia list at this stage. It is playing double Irida, which is a bit of a surprise and is not playing anything like the escape rope. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people by now know what Lugia's looking like. It's really that question mark of, do we like Irida? Do we like Bird Keeper? What sort of items go alongside an Irida if we're going to go for that approach? And outside of that, it's more or less all the same sort of stuff here. We have Diego Casaraga, a world champion, so definitely worth looking at their list. And this seems to be, again, a very straightforward 60 with the one copy of Irida coming into the deck list, as well as the V-Guard energy. Uh, looking very simplistic with uh, really high counts of all the usual suspects, the 3-3 three, three Lugia line as well, so a little bit more consistency possibly in that list. Also in the top eights, there was a Lost Box and a Gudra. So let's have a look at these decks just for some variety. <clears throat> it looks like it was a Raikou Zama list making top eight, and quite an interesting one at that, because it is incorporating cross switches as a two count, which is pretty cheeky. I actually feel like you don't get away with this very often at all with this deck list, um, because of how often you need to prioritize keeping energy, whatever they're in your selects, as well as physical Pokemon, any gates, any supporters, any rods. Like, it's really hard to actually reach a state in the game where you can cross switch if during the game. Um, it literally has to be like an early Raihan that comes off. I can't think of any other way that this is possible. Also, there's like one Sableye, one Psyche as well. So it feels like a lot of corners cut to make this cross switcher thing happen. It would be a massive power spike, but I just don't think it comes off often enough. Um, we have a Goo as well in top eight. And this seems to be another straightforward list, which is incorporating Parasol as well as Temple. There's still been that back and forth throughout the format, whether or not these should be in here or not but Gudra seems to be doing well um, regardless, so always nice to see. On to Vancouver, we have Ian Robb, another super accomplished player with, I believe, their fifth regional win, which is an absolutely absurd statistic, like such ruthless performances over and over again. And this is incorporating the Irida escape rope, which was kind of new at the time. Um, nice to see. There's such great high roll potential with rope being in the deck list, so I really like this as the choice over just playing a physical switch. Um, not compromising, still having quite a high support account, still having a pretty healthy energy count in here as well. I really like Ian's list. I feel like this is like the finished article of a, fi of a Lugia list, in my opinion. I feel like if I ever I was going into a tournament at this stage, I would be running this exact 60, possibly just adding an extra capture energy and over speed. Uh, but other than that, I like, I really like the list. I think it's great. There's maybe some debate over boss being another Serena just for an additional discard energy out because you're playing the three research three Marnie uh, rather than the four two split so a few tweaks possibly um, but that's only preference cards I feel like the actual like main core mechanics of the deck I like this one the most out of all the Lugias I've seen and then another Gudra coming in second place this time it is playing the belt which I'm a fan of definitely helps out against control so you can't just get Eld Eldegoss looped although that's far less popular now um, and it's also allowing you to gust and knock out evolving V Pokemon to really accelerate your prize race, and it is still playing the one copy of Parasol in here for a little bit of double protection when need be, uh, which is kind of cool to see. And there's also an Arc Dura in top four with Zat Lesage, super accomplished player himself, um, and they've just been rocking Arc Dura for a few events now and seem to have it down to an exact science, playing Heavy Collapse Stadium in this build, um, which definitely helps out against your Mew matchup, but I think it is a little bit dicey against Lost Box. The one thing that I find really interesting about Lost Zone Box is that many of the builds are moving away from R Rayquaza, and I think going into this weekend, Rayquaza makes so much sense. We've already seen a lot of 
Goo and Dura in top cut, and Rayquaza is really good at beating those, and Lost Box has no other way of really handling those decks. So I would feel like Lost City makes more sense in Dura going forward, but Zach has managed to do well with Collapse. There's definitely been times where I felt like Collapse was right, and it feels like Zach picked a good tournament for it. This was the other event where we saw six Lugias in cuts, so we'll have a look at the other top four 60, but unfortunately the other top eight lists, there's not too much we can say at this stage because we are looking at lists that are within like two cards of each other at this stage over and over again, because Lugia really has been scienced in every which way now. We'll break up the IRL tournaments with a couple of late night standings where Mew was able to win with an 802 record, and this is an Aerodactyl-based build of Mew with that V-Star power. I know uh, Grant Manley's just done a recent article about Aerodactyl in Mew, um, so probably worth listening or reading that, I should say, um, if you want to have more insights in that regard. Um, I always like uh, reading Grant's stuff. He's a very opinionated player, but also explains things in a very good way, um, and obviously a top player. Uh, the Collapse Stadium is becoming more and more standard in this list as well. It gives you a way of getting rid of Aerodactyl, which is kind of interesting as an option, but also can be healing against Lost Zone Box, which I like, um, which is why we're not seeing a Switch cart, just a physical copy of Switch instead here. Um, very minor thing, but it can allow you in some small spots to um, play the Switch proactively, then figure out your turn, where the <clears throat> where a Switch cart forces you to like retreat first out of your VMAX, then play the cart, and it commits you to that exact Mew. So there is some reason when you are playing the Collapse to go back to the physical copy of Switch, which I like. And I also like any room being made for Rotom Phone. Definitely makes sense. Um, just for more consistency, definitely like that option. More Lugia's doing well. Um, just a little bit less in this top eight. We will have a look at the second place list. I will try and make a point of looking at the finalist list whenever. And it feels like uh, the Irida rope combo is catching on and definitely is a powerful combo. There was an Arc Dura that made top four, and this is looks to be the same as um, Zach Lesage's 60, so that's very solid. There is a Palkia doing well, which is that toolbox with the Ice Q Wash combo. It has Drapion, it has um, Jelly Kuno, it has Crab for higher damage output matchups. Uh, we've seen this again before. Um, and it just seems to squeak in every now and then. Still not the most consistent 60, but it has strategies into all the popular stuff. There's an Arceus that made top eight. <laughs> wow, it's an Arceus Gigas. <clears throat> I wasn't prepared to talk about this deck at all. Uh, man, it even has um, an emergency surfacing Empoleon. I have this in my cube. <laughs> That's the power level we're talking about of a card. Um, but if you have no cards in hand, you can bench it and draw three. This is actually... An annoyingly chunky single prize Pokemon that you can use possibly against like Lost Box or something for a 60 snipe. I don't really know why this is here, I'll be honest with you. This is so wild. Um, I'm not too sure. Is this literally just so that you have an answer through Mill Tank? Possibly that's why it's in here. I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, but the Gigas um, is interesting in that. This is playing Powerful Colorless, so you can try and push that Giga Impact to 280, right? No, you can't, because you don't play Belts. So, it's in here to still try and Star Guardian, question mark? I really don't know. It's an Arc deck, and it only has a 1-1 bib, so I'm feeling like I have to Star Birth quite often. It's playing part and Vacuum. It, so, it plays the Capsule, so you can try and tank with Gigas. This just, like, isn't a fully supported Gigas. It's so weird. I feel like if I was playing Gigas, I would want an extra powerful and, like, at least one belt so you can 280 stuff. What am I missing? I don't know. So kooky. I really wanted Gigas to work. It's such a cool card, but it feels like it hasn't been lent into fully there. Uh, but oh well. Nice result. And cool to see a deck that makes me scratch my head. The other late night was won by a Lugia, so let's have a quick nod to Lugia. Uh, this one is working in the Cancelling Cologne as an extra tech include, which is sometimes creeping into the lists at this stage. Kind of more not than is. Uh, our first Regis of the day comes in. The single prize Reggie incorporating the cape. Has Rotom Phones in here as well. We haven't seen Rotom Phones very often. And it's leaning into quad speed lightning. So a bit of a different engine. Kind of interesting to see. 
giving yourself a peek at some cards and then drawing straight into them with speeds. I mean, obviously, Reggie Lecky is the most important attacker in the most relevant matchup, and it's also very good into Lost Zone Box, so, like, it's very reasonable that you'll want to a Lecky, like, a ton, and you're playing three copies of it, so in theory it's, like, super live. Um, so that's definitely an interesting combo. Rotophone obviously can work with Marnie and Research as well, and Serena, so all your supporters work alongside the phone. Huh, maybe we've missed a trick with Reggie's all along. That could be pretty cool. Um, did we look at the Mew? No, we didn't look at the Mew. Let's have a look at this quickly. It's another Aerodactyl Mew coming in. This one looks pretty routine, just with more phones than the last one. Looking good. Um, let's move on to Utrecht, which I, of course, commentated. Very happy to be back behind the desk um, with Ross as well, which is awesome. Uh, normally, we only get to do that for international championships, so... Uh, really enjoyed myself. Obviously, Alex and Shay. I've casted with them before, but great to do it in person as well. Um, we got to rotate casters, so a lot of variety there. Hopefully, uh, we gain some rapport and get better together as casters, which is great. Um, and it was won by Ark Dura from Nico Alabas. Um, I see Champ, of course. Um, and he incorporated mostly just some stadium innovation. I talked about Lost City earlier and how I think it's really good into Lost Zone Box and Reggie's as well. And Temple of Sinnoh is also good against Reggie's, but also a secondary defense to Parasol against Lugia. So a couple extra bits and bobs going on in um, this list, but overall very nice. Having the Parasol defensive players are very strong um, and great to see Nico doing well again. We have Vinny playing the Gudra. Um, again, not too much here that's that exciting. Poker Gears have been the most recent innovation of Goo, uh, just because getting to seven is like such a high priority that you want to not be missing a beat with Colrus. And then once you're, you know, if ever you're seeing gear towards the mid to late, it can obviously helps you toward Roxanne, which is pretty nice. So I really like Goo. I think it makes, sorry, I really like gear in Goo. I think it does make a lot of sense. I think also Stefan was playing Gears as well, uh, but also had the Jelly Kuno option. Uh, not quite the Jelly, actually, but just the Paralysis option with Wild Freeze. You already play Nets, so you can try and do this twice, then just, like, net it up, possibly. Um, and this actually works quite nicely with Rolling Iron Math, if you can get it to work properly. Uh, so this could be an extra way you could try and have a good time or one-up some Lugia players as well, which I thought was also pretty creative. Um, then we have our... First Lugia, and our only Lugia in top 8, and it's from Tord, and it's like a complete theme deck. Uh, it is literally just ball search items and just draw supporters with boss, and it's playing 17 energy and a 4-3 Lugia. So it's like really crazy actually to see that a just draw good forehead Lugia list did so well, but maybe it's just Tord things, and I feel like not many people will... Uh, sort of revert back to such a simplistic list. I think at least having a vacuum in here would make sense. He literally had to scoop to Nico because um, he was checkmated by a parasol with Dura. Um, so maybe that's like, if you're really trying to be, I'm just drawing well with Lugia, I think it is just cut an energy and go to um, at least vacuum. And if you want to add in Irida and stuff, you're going to start cutting away from the treats, but it is what it is. Uh, I like that Todd was bold enough to be like, I'm just going to draw better than everyone and do well. <clears throat> Bernardo was also a massive surprise for the tournament. Bernardo hasn't played for a number of months, and li it shows, right? It's literally an old deck list that has made a comeback, uh, because we haven't seen Beedrill for a number of uh, months, really. Because mostly of Parasol, I think, where the Persist Sting doesn't really come off <clears throat> against everything. But Lugia doesn't play Parasol, which is great, and Mew po probably just plays like one copy, so if you can find the situation to just deal with the other one via Beedrill, it could actually be massive. So, ironically, Arc Intel Bees is like kind of okay. You have the late game beat stick potential with Radiant Charizard, and you have um, the recovery of Ordinary Rod to try and reload this. You have Hand Disruption in the form of Roxanne and Marnie. You have the healing of Sharon's Care into things like Gudra and Lost Zone Box and such, where you're trying to have this tanky arc just over and over again. So, kind of interesting to see that Arc Intel actually still can survive in this format, with the B as well. Uh, Lawrence is an absolute genius. <clears throat> Hasn't played for a number of 
years, I think, uh, or at least this season, turns up to a tournament just because it's nearby, top eights, and then scoops in top eight to Nico because he's already got the maximum amount of packs that he could, and he's not going for worlds, so he doesn't care about points. So Lawrence is an absolute genius, uh, doing well with Gudra, which is awesome. And there was also two Mew in top eight. Uh, so let's have a look at these. Uh, it's more DTE Mew. This one's actually playing Drapion, which I think is kind of sus, personally. Um, yeah, I really don't think it's that valuable in the mirror, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've never found it to be that valuable. And then Oliver with uh, just a cookie cutter list, really, uh, going on in there. I also want to look at the ninth place list because this was on the bubble, unfortunately, because all of our winning ins concluded naturally without tying. Uh, and Christian was playing a Lugia Weezing with more Peko V, which is a hit and run attacker that's obviously a lightning type that can help you out against the mirror, uh, whilst establishing this uh, gas lock from from Weezing. Um, you are making some pretty interesting cuts in your deck list. Like the support account is quite low. Uh, you only have one research, for example, and no Marnie in the list. You're just playing judges instead, um, so that Lugias can't prepare a group a Guru card, or uh, same for Lost Zone Box. Um, but it is playing a couple really interesting supporters. It's playing Furrisoed Girl to try and get your coughing in the active so you can Ascension. You're playing Quad Hiding, of course. Um, and you're also playing Bird Keeper for a Pivot. So, really creative list. Uh, incorporating the Weezing Wolpeco was very cool to see. And, uh, yeah, it cuts some corners here and there, but it has some major disruption at its disposal. Uh, which is epic. Um, and let's have a look at the most recent standings then. Let's actually have a look at the metagame uh, as this is most pertinent and most recent, how things are shaping up. Somehow Lugia isn't the most popular deck in one of these tournaments. That's absolutely absurd. Lug uh, Mew was really heavily played, then Gudra, then Lost Zone Box and Arc Dura and Regis. Okay, wow. And look, the Arc Quasa... Uh, sorry, the Arc... What am I talking about? Ray Quasa Lost Box is so low down crazy. So if you combine the Lost Zone decks, they'd be above Gudra, but still, only three people playing the Rayquaza build. And I think we've seen so many tanking decks over these last few uh, results that it makes so much sense to be playing Rayquaza right now. Uh, ironically, it was a Lugia that won, <laughs> even though it wasn't the most popular deck. This one's playing the Greed Machine. Turning a profit can give you easy prizes against um, obviously Lost Zone box. And randomly in Mirror sometimes, if they're forced to use uh, mana feet or pumpkin because you play a path uh, that's pretty cheeky so you can try and weave this in in more matchups than one actually to get some naughty prizes i suppose that's what's playing skylar over irida so you can skylar for path if you have to pretty cheeky going on there i think green definitely makes me weep as a lost zone player so um yeah maybe it has some value although lost zone seems to be less and less popular although it's still very good against gudra as well to be fair which is picking up play <clears throat> we see our first Fusion Mew doing well. Obviously just weaving in the one Mellow and still having some defensive cards, like still has Amani in here for some hand disruption, which is nice. Um, yep, only playing three Cram is kind of sus though. I definitely think you want to max out on those when you're playing a Sparkle build. Lots of Mew doing well, so let's have a, take a look at another one. Wow, all the Fusion builds doing well this tournament. That's pretty spicy. This one's playing Deoxys as an attacking threat. It's playing the Judge instead of the Marnie, but it's playing Power Pad as well for Reload. Still playing three Cram. What's going on here? Who are these three Cram gamers? All right, we're back. We're back. With the A-Spec phone, this guy. This guy gets it. Absolutely huge brain. Love to see it. Okay. Rotom phone's a great A-Spec to play. We have an Arcdura. More of the same. It's just all Lost City. Seems pretty reasonable. Uh, and we do have a Lost Box deck, which did make top eights. They've been few and far between, but it seems like the Zama Raikou is doing best. This is also the Cross Switcher build, so the build we've seen previously, the one that I got tilted about. I'm tilted once again. A Raikou, uh, sorry, a Rayquaza build did make ninth. And it's playing a 1-1 Tina line. Holy. People really out here doing stuff. Let's have a look at the last late night and the metagame for this one. Wow, still Lugia was the second most popular deck. Actually crazy actually crazy and how many people yeah two people played the ray lost box which i think is the best lost box to play right now actually wild it was a uh 
other Lost Box that did well, though. What is this? Okay. So it has Aerodactyl in Lost Box now. We've resorted to that, have we? Even though it's playing Zero Aura and Dragonite, it's still trying to play Aerodactyl. It's like a Turbo Builder X. It's playing Forest and Vacuum. This is wild. It's playing Crobat and Fish. What is happening with this list? This is actually crazy. I don't know how to appropriately judge this deck because it's so different to everything I've seen previously. The Aerodactyl in here as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. If you know, tell me how to react to that. Very good. It beat Alugia in finals. Alugia was playing Drapion and Cologne. Okay. Got some definitely cheeky stuff going on in some of these lists. There's an Atelitus that made top four as well. Uh, wow, people really are out here playing decks. I, I'm at that point where I've just lost my mind. I'm still thinking about the first place list, I'm not going to lie. There was a Mew. We're back to Fusion. So Fusion's still getting some results here and there. A Palkia did pretty well. This is, again, just that toolbox. We're seeing it over and over again. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's much space to be creative. Another Eternatus? Is Eternatus just busted all along and no one, everyone refuses to play it, but it's insane? Maybe. There's a Reggie. So much diversity in these, uh, in this top eight. Just playing some shoes. Got the Lotto. All right, not too bad. I will end on an Arceus Malamar. I'm dread to think, okay, what is going on? I, I see billowing smoke at this point and I've lost my mind. <laughs> okay, what the heck? They don't get to draw the prize cards. Sure, sure. I mean, I guess you are a handlock deck, so maybe it's a thing. But what is going on at this stage? Ah, my brain. It's too late in the day for this. I, I wasn't prepared enough for this sort of content, I'm not going to lie. Ark Malamar. It's been a while, Ark Mali. It's playing Capturing Aromas over Incenses. This isn't post-rotation. What is Capturing Aroma doing in my face? What the heck? It's got a 1-1 one, one wheezing as well. The 1-1. One, one. With one balloon and one rope. How does this ever come off? What the heck? This is so weird. What a funky deck. Okay. I mean, Locke's out here cooking, right? There's no doubt that Locke's just having fun with, with the deck, but it's pretty sick that they got top eight. So yeah, um, I have to try and recalibrate after all that. Lugia should and will be the most popular archetype, and I feel like Ian's list that we looked at is probably my favorite 60. Uh, and just the debate over, like, if you want to play a Serena over a boss, and if you want to play fourth capture or not. Um, Mew, mostly I still think that Judge Path Mew is the best way to go. Um, I'm fine with Aerodactyl being in the deck. Honestly, it gives you more percentage into the most popular deck, so that's fine. Lost Box, we've still seen a few of them in top eight, but they're sort of... Um, diversifying in places that I think are really weird, and I think... Rayquaza Lost Box is actually well positioned for this tournament because it's actually okay into Gudra and Arcdura. Um, especially because against Gudra, you know their only hand disruption is Roxanne. So if you just prepare your board state pre-Rocks, you're just so good into that matchup. I don't know how you lose it. Uh, and Arcdura, you have two one-hit KO option delete buttons, which is completely great for you. Um, Regis are just going to keep regging. Not much changes there. Gudra and Arcdura are like still okay choices, certainly. Um, and I wouldn't really change anything with those. I feel like it's a really hard tournament for Vikavolk because I do think Gudra and Arcdura are like here to stay a little bit. They've had enough top eight placements that they are like established at this point. So Vikavolk has to dodge and weave a lot if it wants to do well at the tournament because I think it's bad into Gu, Arcdura, and Regis. That's like too many things, and we're not so centralized at this point. It looks like it's like spreading out to a top six. Uh, so although you'll face a lot of Lugias, you can still lose that matchup as well. The Eternatus thing, I really don't know about it. Like, it's made a top eight, uh, but I think it's still kind of cope. 
I think that pretty much rounds things out. Yeah, that's my thoughts going into the last two tournaments of Crown Zenith. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you for another video tomorrow. Cheers.